how many of those documents have you actually read? Uh, I've evaluated all the documents that are in the archive. You've read every single one? Well, I do understand what I turned over. But there, there's a difference between understanding what's in the documents and reading what's in the documents. I recognize the concern. Right, because you know, when, when you're handing over thousands of NSA documents, the last thing you want to do is read them. In my defense, I'm not handling anything anymore. That's been passed to the journalists, and they're uh, using extraordinary security measures to make sure that this is reported in the most responsible way. So the New York Times took a slide, didn't redact it properly, and in the end, it was possible for people to see that something was being used in Mosul on Al-Qaeda. That is a problem. Well, that's a f up. It is a f up. And these things do happen in reporting. In journalism, we have to accept that some mistakes will be made. This is a, a fundamental concept of liberty. Right, but you have to own that then. You're giving documents with information you know could be harmful, which could get out there. Yes. That was Edward Snowden, the man, the spy, the thief, responsible for the release of thousands of NSA documents in an interview with John Oliver. John Oliver, if you're unfamiliar, is a satirical news host, yet he's asking a very real question. Snowden's done a number of media interviews since becoming a criminal, most notably with NBC News, among others. And yet, it took a comedian, a satirical news host, to reveal that Snowden is nothing but an anti-American traitor. Listen again to the first part of that last exchange. How many of those documents have you actually read? Uh, I've evaluated all of the documents that are in the archive. You've read every single one? Well, I do understand what I turned over. But there, there's a difference between understanding what's in the documents and reading what's in the documents. I recognize the concern. Right, because you know, when, when you're handing over thousands of NSA documents, the last thing you want to do is read them. Isn't it a disgrace when John Oliver gets the most telling, damning exchange with Snowden, gets him to reveal he actually didn't read all the documents he dumped on the left-wing media, only to be directed straight into the hands of America's enemies? Isn't that an indictment on our media? Snowden had this pretense that dazzled journalists for months, and I think continues to dazzle a lot of them. Oh, I was only releasing things that show violations of civil liberties of the United States, as if he was somehow the moral arbiter, as if he was the appropriate judge. Now he's admitted he didn't even take the time to judge. If Snowden was some heroic civil libertarian, don't you think he would have spent time, ample time, going through those documents? And yet, if you ask the media and intellectual circles, all they'll say is that he exposed the NSA spying on domestic surveillance. There's actually a group of artsy elites in Brooklyn who erected a Snowden monument in Brooklyn in a Brooklyn park. Is that not telling? Rather than holding this man to account, journalists are like little fanboys. They worship him because all they care about is more information to fuel stories. Implication be damned, just give us more information. Beyond this being a massive indictment on our media though, this also shows that any claims by Snowden that this was somehow in the public interest are false. But how could this have been about civil liberties? How could this have been in the public interest if he didn't even know what was printed in the documents? Not only that, where did Snowden go to seek asylum? First China, and then Russia. And if you needed more proof that this man was nothing but a shill for the Kremlin, look no further than this Putin propaganda exercise he was complicit in. Does Russia intercept, store, or analyze in any way the communications of millions of individuals? And do you believe that simply increasing the effectiveness of intelligence or law enforcement investigations can justify placing societies rather than subjects under surveillance? Mr. Snowden, you are, are a former agent, a spy. I used to be working for an intelligence service. We are going to talk one professional language. First of all, our intelligence efforts are strictly regulated. You have to get a court permission to stalk a particular person. We don't have a mass 
uh, system of such interception. And according to our law, with our law, uh, it cannot exist. It's laughable. Putin controls every aspect of the Russian economy and gets a piece of every aspect of the Russian economy. You think America's bad? Imagine the lengths Putin, this ex-KGB thug, goes to surveil his citizens. But it's not just this massive hypocrisy that makes Snowden an anti-American traitor. Because of him and the release of these documents, enemies, terrorists knew exactly how they were being monitored and thus found other means to communicate. The documents Snowden gave to the Washington Post's Barton Gelman and the Guardian's Glenn Greenwald, among others, revealed details about how the NSA intercepted emails, phone calls, radio transmissions of Taliban fighters in Pakistan, of an operation to gauge the loyalties of CIA recruits in Pakistan, of NSA intercepts to see just exactly what's going on inside Iran, and of other operations that have nothing to do with domestic surveillance. How sinister that the U.S. is spying on the Taliban, except that I'd expect they were spying on the Taliban. And you know what? Other countries are too. None of what I've just listed have anything to do with domestic surveillance or even spying on allies. They're not illegal and they're not immoral. John Oliver called him incompetent. Snowden is so much more than incompetent. He's a liar, he's a thief, an anti-American criminal, and should be tried for treason.